Joining me is the team of Call Him Eddie. Uh, Sanjay, I'll we'll start with you first. Um, you are Eddie. And uh, do you want to first uh, tell people how is the lockdown treating you? Are you enjoying this? Uh, at least you're getting to do work. Your films are releasing. You're doing interviews. Yes. Um, of course, the lockdown hasn't treated um, um, anyone well. But right. I would say it's, it's what you made out of it or how you, how you accepted it and... Uh, try to actually, um, you know, take that pause, reflect, realign. So I've used right. it for all those, uh, those things. And actually, I've, uh, I've actually enjoyed this time and kind of getting used to it. <laughs> so let's fuss around and a lot of, lot of just realigning, you know, I mean, a lot of things we did just, just, you just did without thinking. So right. I think, uh, uh, this has been a good time to uh, just reflect and actually be um, be more in sync with uh, yourself. Yeah, right. So you know, you know, since you're saying that, what is it that you did earlier and you think you won't do after everything opens up? I might still meet you for a coffee, but <laughs> but if the, if it's an interview, we can just do it. You know. Yeah, we can do it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but having said that, like many times, you would you know um, just uh, okay. I have a. I have a small production office yes. and I think I would just go there to feel that, okay, I'm working even, even if there was no work. So I don't need to do that anymore. Right. I'll right. go there when there's work. Yeah. Uh, I can have my desk at home and uh, my right. kids can get my attention. And uh, okay. um, so just a few, few things here and there, you know, right. like, uh, unnecessarily uh, going out and, and shopping or even window shopping, just point, pointless stuff. Of course, for some it's retail therapy or window shopping therapy, but for someone like me, I'm, I'm, I'm anyway a home person, so it, it doesn't bother <laughs> right. me. Yeah. Right. Um, Isha, where are you? We are, we are in Mumbai. Uh, where are you and uh, how are you doing? I'm actually doing great. I'm uh, in rainy Goa and yeah. um, it's a complete, uh, I actually feel like I'm in a little bit of a twilight zone uh, because I got here and of course, like this is, uh, it's Goa is not as badly hit by COVID uh, as the right. other states are. So though while we're being completely careful uh, about everything that we're doing, it's just right. a nicer space to be in. Um, I'm very lucky I have some very close friends here and I'm staying with them. And um, I just decided to ride out uh, some of the storm over here. Uh, so yeah, I was in Delhi for about three months and then, right. I, then I got here. Yeah, and then I cut my hair. <laughs> so. Great. So that, that's good. Whatever, you know, everything to stay positive and be happy. Sanjeev, where are you? I'm back home. I'm in Gurgaon right now and I'm visiting okay. family. So, uh, yeah, been a good time with family, also spending some time with them. It's Fantastic. valuable. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'll come to you. Uh, you, sure. know, uh, you play a journalist uh, and uh, who's going to interview this cuddler. Uh, could you tell us more, the viewers who are watching, what exactly does she want? Does she, is she looking for an interesting story? Yeah, so I think um, the reason this character was really uh, interesting to me was that... Uh, it's like it's a it's a really hardened character. Like she has got a glass mm -hmm. wall, but yeah. uh, that wall is very thin because she is obviously in so much pain. Mm -hmm. You know, so she is literally just waiting to have something happen, but she doesn't know it. So she's obviously on the brink um, of some kind of um, explosion or implosion, if you will. So uh, what happens with this uh, journalist is that she's going in there as a complete skeptic, which is something I think you see from the beginning is that right. she goes there, but she is so disarmed by him because everything that he says is mm -hmm. um, she can't refute it. Right. There's, there's no, she just keeps questioning it. She doesn't actually offer any answers or doesn't really offer any defenses. She just keeps questioning it. And he asks her other questions. Are you married? Do you have a boyfriend? Mm -hmm. When was the last time you held someone? This is not what she went in there thinking that she was going to be doing. She went in there thinking that she's going to kind of, um, you know, go in there and just sort of see this sort of like flaky guy who thinks that he's some kind of a therapist. But this is not therapy. And she keeps asking, but why the touch? Why the touch? Why the touch? Yeah, right. um, at a different level, I think it's also interesting because, you know, being a woman in media, what ends up happening is that you have to watch yourself a lot because right. any kind of... Um, friendliness, any kind of gentleness, there's so much misinterpretation that happens that you actually mm. become very inward, especially physically, right. because you're kind of navigating a man's world. You're always worried about giving a, you know, giving mm. the wrong message. You, you know, you are getting a sort of an inappropriate energy most of the time. So I've felt that in myself also having been in media for so long that 
Right. It is something, it is a mask that you don very easily. Right. Yet it's for me, for example, it's not who I am. I'm a very sort of, you know, I'm a gentle, affectionate soul. And I actually told Sanjeev when he talked about this to me that I would have been a professional cuddler because I <laughs> frankly love cuddling. Right. I grew up with a lot of love and affection. I understand right. the importance of touch. I think that we're also overstimulated all the time. You know, we're looking at stuff all the time. We're listening to stuff. We're tasting. Mm-hmm. You know, the only thing that we're not doing is touching. And I think right. that's why in a single moment, it works so fast because it is oh. as valid a sense in our bodies, but it is the most underrated and the most undermined and the most underutilized sense. And right. sometimes it's just, it's as simple as that. You don't actually need someone to intellectually explain to you what's going on. You don't need to always understand cognitively what's going on. You just need right. to be held. You just need right. to be a child again. You need to go back to that space. You know, you, it's like our personalities are formed between the age of one and seven. And that's when you will right. ask really help. So mm-hmm. going back in there means that you're actually just going back to your inner child. And I think that's why right. that works the way it does. Right. So where did this story come from? Uh, this is, um, uh, you know, where are, there, are there places where, you know, this profession is popular? Where did you hear this? So, so it's actually originated from Japan. They have cutting right. spas there. Uh, right. So, uh, and then from Japan, it started growing to the West side, which is like right. Europe, New York and all of that. So now in okay. New York, Europe, there are individuals doing this. Okay. Uh, India still, we are growing. So, you know, it takes years to adapt certain things. Right. Uh, so now, yeah, so the whole idea for the film was also like touch is magic. So it's more, more touch mm-hmm. is magic, keeping it as a foreground, but uh, the major part is just be more communicative, start communicate right. with people with your family, whether it's anyone, start discussing your problems. It's a lot of things which come along with this film. And, oh, right. uh, you know, when you're, when you're a little low in life, also a normal holding hand would also help you. So yes. sometimes we restrict ourselves doing it outside also, and we call right. them PDAs. But uh, I think PDAs are also fine till a certain extent, like, you know, right. so yeah, but it's originated from Japan and I hope we start picking this up a little bit. I think it also needs this. to normalize the idea of non-sexual touch. Yes. Right. You know, um, yeah. we always, uh, we all, we've um, learned to understand and obviously with good reason, we've learned to mm. understand touch as predatory. Mm. Um, and even if it's not meant to be predatory, but we also understand as like, here's the thing, you know, this is the boundary. So touch becomes the boundary. You're allowed to look at me, you're allowed to listen to me, you're allowed to do all of that, you're not allowed to touch me. And mm-hmm. that's fair because people misuse it, but right. that doesn't mean that it, um, when intended correctly, that it doesn't work. So it's really, I'm sorry to cut, I'm sorry to cut, I'm Rohit, I'm sorry to cut this, but I, sure. I so wanted to say it today. I think me and Sanjay have been talking since yesterday about it. And I think Isha right. also knows it. A lot of, uh, we, it was very, it, it was a very sensitive topic. So it yes, was, it, 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 it was very risky to make such a topic and get it adapted to the audience and the people over here. But mm-hmm. uh, we're kind of surprised to the response we're getting. Like last night after, I saw a lot of messages and people actually got connected to it. And I was just generally asking, why are you getting, I mean, what was there to get so connected to it? They're like, no, generally we, we are going through so many problems and complications. Mm. This just connects us deeply inside. So, you know, right. somewhere down the line, if, if you can control or change someone's thought and this film can actually change someone's perception and person can yeah. become more vulnerable. I right. think we are on a home run now. I don't right, know. That's right, my right. perspective. No, it's great. Uh, in fact, uh, Sanjay, as from what Isha was saying, it's, you know, also even the profession is a very fine line of the person you go to who you trust. Uh, and that, that's such a, such a thin space. Um, what, do, what do you think about this? Do you think something like that will do well in India? People will be very, you know, uh, think a hundred times before going to an unknown person for, you know, for whatever trust issues. I feel that it's... Uh, you know, it's not an FMCG product, you know, the, this mm. formula becomes a toothpaste, you know, and this formula becomes a soap. So right. you can pick any soap. The brands mm-hmm. are different. Right. Like in life, we have friend philosopher guides. Mm. There is a certain level of uh, understanding, depth, uh, maturity, uh, philosophy, an energy thing. Okay. So you attract or you would get attracted to a certain kind of energy. And you may go to a cuddler which, who has um, whose intentions you may doubt and it'll just come in a thought, you know, 
like mm. while you're cuddling you'll get that thought now mm. uh, the, the the magic is the beauty is that whether that cuddler is able to help you to let it go and in case they sense it in the cuddler then obviously there is this there's some mismatch happening there right so um trust becomes a very very key thing but trust can only come with once you sense it and you experience it because right. trust cannot be you know you uh, you can't half trust it's not like you trust your friend 50% and 50% you don't trust either you trust or you don't mm-hmm. trust mm-hmm. relationships friendships whatever either there's trust or there's no trust and once the trust is broken either you give it another chance or you don't so th- that's right. your personal thing but over here um, when you're seeking professional it's like talking to a counselor so yeah. you reveal everything mm. uh, if you know about yourself and there is there's professional ethic the beauty about a hug is that your words cease right? right when you come and meet someone you just like after long you just hug you don't need words right. and if you're crying and you know, after a fight or something you just hug that's like okay there's closure mm. and uh, so it can do it's it's your jadoo ki jhappi yaar whether you mm, think it no, yeah yeah in a, in a uh, it's it's literally that right asi punjabi aaye to sare punjabi hain to why not nikli jata hai right i think that essentially as humans what we are always trying to do is find safety all we want right. to do is be ourselves but we are constantly right. seeking permission to be ourselves Right. and what are we looking for we're just looking for a safe space at any given moment we're looking for a space a, a safe space as actors what do we do we try and maybe get together you know i need to feel that my director i can trust him with what i'm putting mm-hmm. out there i'm opening up to this actor i was lying there i was actually crying you know i was tapping mm-hmm. into something i felt very safe with sanjay to right. put that out there otherwise i would have given a very dishonest performance so that's right. it's all about trust and safety to just be yourself mm-hmm. so um If something like this happened, I would be the first person to do that because I'm personally not squeamish about this. I don't have a problem with love, you know. Right. I think the problem is that we have prob- a problem with love, and love doesn't have to be. It can be something that you just have within yourself. It does not have to be directed towards a person. It doesn't have to be inspired by a person. Right. It can just be in you, and I right. feel like such therapies are about this. And I think that's right. why this casting was interesting. Why did we use a man and a woman? Why yeah. didn't? Why weren't there two men or two women? uh we also you know we put out something that's considered a traditional relationship mm. it's considered you know there's a girl who has daddy issues clearly you know she's with a um, a man that um, you know so there's there is a very slight undercurrent of where you think that can this turn sexual will this turn sexual will they kiss at yeah, the end yeah. but it never happens they brush up on it but it never actually happens and i think that is what the film is trying to say that there are ways right. to do this without ending right then right. so i'll ask you why not a guy and a guy or a girl and a girl did you did that cross your mind no it did uh it did guy and a guy but uh, i just I, thought... i think if if you allow me to uh yeah, i yeah, mean because i i remember both. discussing this Sure, uh, sure, sure. Please, Sanjay. I, I know Sanjay was is thinking. Uh, <laughs> we had this conversation. <laughs> you know, often, you know, um, uh, Rohit, when we made My Brother Nikhil. Yes. Um, it was a film about love, acceptance, and all. And one, mm-hmm. um, many journalists that time had asked me, like, "Is there a kiss? Is there a kiss?" So the entire attention was being taken mm-hmm. away by that physicality, physicality. over there. Yeah. Okay. So um, I think. is not that it's happened intentionally or something but sure. this gives way to in fact there is a there's a session with a man over there um mm-hmm. and this gives way to actually explore that as a sequel or something i don't know <laughs> right yeah yeah <laughs> right a woman on a woman or something yeah. It, yeah. it doesn't matter and, and you, sexuality and, and, uh, and, and gender somewhere. gender is not not limiting in this yeah right Right, Sanjay, you said you got great response yesterday. Is it also because of the time we are in? You know, when we watch something like that, cuddling is something that right now is definitely not happening. So, uh, is is that one of the reason why people connected? Yeah, it just definitely has added. Yeah. To it. When I mentioned the gender in there, why um, why I talked about that is because I'm talking mm-hmm. about certain traditional understandings of relationships as they exist in the audience today. Uh, okay. This woman, in particular, mm-hmm. has an issue with her father. Right. Right. it's not about her being straight or gay or anything like that she has sure, an issue yeah. with her father yeah. she's got pain and loss associated with her father this mm-hmm. man 
is somebody who represents a father figure at that moment but he's not mm-hmm. that much older than her or he's not you know it's someone that she could be attracted to it's right. something that could have happened had they met in a different situation you know mm-hmm. if he wasn't so professional or you know if he didn't have the work ethic etc cetera, etc cetera, or they just met elsewhere which wasn't supposed right. to be this right. so it's not about um, gay and straight it's about the way that an audience will typically what are you trying to do in a film you're trying to create tension that keeps the audience watching a little bit yeah, longer yeah. right this was a very small very slight undercurrent that we had because mm. whenever you see this kind of a dynamic you assume that something is going to happen mm. you know so it's somebody who can look at this man and see a sort of a a caring paternal figure but it's also someone yeah. who can be sexually attracted to this man right. so it is a little bit of that so we always play a little bit on that tension but it's not actually there right. so I, for, at least for me i mean <laughs> this was interesting <laughs> for me for that reason that it, right. it, it was always and a possibility and, but and it doesn't Rohit, happen and rohit we catered both the larger audience were there that's all absolutely you, you did, know, you did. Think both the genders were there and i'm, yeah, I'm yeah. telling you the response coming from the women are really good so that i mean everyone's feeling more safe about it so that is nice that's the idea you know uh, so you, you know this is on a platform where it's free to watch uh, are you happy that it's come at a time when you know people are home they can consume a lot more uh, is this the release that you planned and you that you wanted yeah so royal stag uh, is a great platform for short films right. uh, sure, yeah. a uh, they cater to a greater audience and a larger audience number 2 at this particular time like i told you unfortunately fortunately is definitely helped us the film right um uh, right. people are definitely valuing the word touch right, right now so mm. before even the film was released i obviously because we are a bunch of people and we start sending the trailers to or the edit people used to watch and come over right. everyone i still remember used to message me i'm missing hugs man i'm missing <laughs> all of that just one hug just sitting around holding hands so right. all of that has definitely helped us and the right. film right we are we are nostradamus you just didn't know it we are <laughs> actually true. nostradamus we predicted in what was going to happen in december i decided i'll figure what was happening fantastic <laughs> guys on that note are you just something on a positive note to end uh, viewers are listening these are also people who are in lockdown in different places uh, isha i start with you what do you want to tell them a way to stay positive Well um I'm going to say that you do need to not be hugging people right now and remain socially distant uh but I think um I think okay so I don't have any kind of qualms about being positive all the time I don't think we need to be positive all the time sure, um sure. and I think that the, for me the 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 insistence on positivity is actually quite right. toxic uh okay. I think if you're feeling negative it's absolutely okay to feel negative what's really important right. is that you don't judge yourself for your negativity because you are human mm-hmm. and we would not have been given the ability to feel negative if it was not some kind of an opportunity in some way right so yeah, i'm going to say that true. rather than to just be positive or like tell yourself that it's uh, important to be positive i'm going to say accept yourself as you are uh, the most positive thing you can do is also accept uh, the negative exactly. feelings that you're having um, right. and use them contrast is created in our lives so that we can use them as an opportunity to grow and evolve and i welcome it Honestly. Great, that's that's fantastic. That's, that's a great way to look at it, Sanjay. Uh, any tips on staying sane during this lockdown? I follow it, and I'd heard uh, I'd uh, heard Isha's uh, uh, Instagram um, conversation about this as well. It was it was right. very lovely. Um, I personally, and that's the message of the film, also here and now. Right. Basically, throughout the lockdown or whatever in life is here and now. Right. Okay. If you're gonna worry what's gonna happen after two months, uh, that that two months will also come as your present, and past right. is just gone. So my my entire awareness is to be just right now, right here. Yeah, and that great, that helps. Yeah. Yeah. Great, uh, so, Sanjay, you can switch off. We don't want your son to miss his class, so please yeah. carry on. Thank you. See you. See you. See you. See you. Chief. Big, see big you. hug from Eddie. <laughs> see you. See you. See you. <laughs> right, Bye. Sanjeev. Lastly, what do you what do you have to add here? You know. Uh, It, it's important that people listen to all the perspectives all right uh, i think i think i think both of them have said the right thing yes. and i would just say calm, be calm be composed and god has just uh, pressed the pause button and we soon will be coming back all of us and we'll revive just be happy and try living for today and right. uh, that's it yeah. that's it great guys call him adi just youtube it and it's all there for free to watch and uh, you guys are great thank you so much for your time thank you so much thank you